Good evening, everyone. We are live tonight from our studio here at our normal location. Joey Blaze here for a special edition of Blunt Talk, the Tuesday after Capital Classic 2021, all part of another big weekend in nine-man flight football. Let's go ahead and sit up right now and get ready and talk about everything that went on. If you want to come in and call and talk about the events of Capital Classic, feel free to do so by clicking the Zoom link going on. But first, let's go ahead and get to the PowerPoint. Um, first off, let's go ahead and play it. Here we go. Capital Classic recap, along with a few other things on here. Let's start off with the B bracket, beginning uh, with the first result of the day. Southside of Reventum, 7 to nothing. Did not get a glimpse of this one. Unfortunately, I was not at uh, Tucker Road on day one, um, and the game was not shot. It looked like a close competitive battle, though, to be expected from these two squads. Um, and in, in the end, Southside prevails. And after that, hey, got ahead of the Southside. Gets another win, but this time on Baez Auto. I know some may say this may not be the same Baez team as before, but the results show otherwise for the weekend. They can still play up to a level. But Southside getting a nice little upset on Baez early on. Don't have the circumstances of that game either. was not there. But if you're Southside, it's a good win. Uh, this has been a pretty good year for these guys. They're out there right now trying to put a team together to travel locally as much as they can. Um, and so far this year, they've had a really good year in the circuit. Um, four and one overall well in the circuit again in this first Saturday for Southside. We'll get to them in a minute. Baez responded very well, though, beating the Maryland Venom 28 to 7 right afterwards. Um, Baez auto overall one on one on the day. Venom, not a good start to the day after the good South, or not a good end to the day after the Southside game. They finished 0 and 2, but a nice little recovery for Baez, who had a bit of a change up at quarterback. Ray Wagner is out, Caleb Walton is in. Uh, for those who don't know, Caleb Walton was the quarterback for Baez Auto back at Clash of York 2. Uh, he led them to victories in that tournament over the affiliate nation, as well as the Black Hawks and Gusto Land before they fell to Aftermath in the semifinals of Clash 2. Um, so he was back in the saddle for this weekend. Uh, not sure when we'll see Ray Wagner again, if we'll see Ray Wagner at some point. Uh, really hope to see the, him back on the field, though, in some capacity, even if not in that bias blue, because that's a talent to look out for. I, I really like what he did. But Caleb brought a little something different to the table. And honestly, we'll give a more assessment on him in a minute. Because um, I like his – I do like his game, too. I do like his game, too. He brings a whole other quarterback, though. Much different attack from Baez there. We'll talk about them in a little bit. Um, fourth game of the day, Titans beat Gusto Land 7-0. Not much I can say on this one again. Wasn't there. Not a lot of B footage on Saturday. B, uh, a lot of A games were going on at the same time, which is understandable. So the A games usually get the priority there. Big time level matchups. And we had a lot of good ones on that day. Uh, big shout out to Ben Pennington, though, and Daly as well for stepping up in a big way and going live for the games. Um, it's going to look great in the documentary. We'll have that out sometime next year, Capital Classic 2021. Um, thanks, Ben and Ann, for the film. Uh, it's going to look really good. I'm really excited to see uh, what we put in store for next year's documentary, like we did last week with that one. So let's see what 2021's Capital Classic movie has in stock. Fifth game of the day, Bad Boys beat Gusto Land 13-6. to six. Another close game with Bad Boys and Gusto. I like when these two meet up with one another. They, so it, they just seem to play with some really competitive matchups. But so far, the Bad Boys have gotten the best of Gusto Land both times. Uh, the one time being a tie. Gusto, I'll talk about them in a minute when I talk about day two. B, like I said, can't really talk about much B in day one. Wasn't there. Sorry. Um, continuing on, it was FOE over the Maryland Titans, 19-13. to 13. FOE in this game, they get the victory. Um, again, can't really comment much on this one. This was the last game of the day and a really good one from what I saw on the lie too. Bad Boys 26 FOE 19. Nice little back and forth battle between those two. Uh, two of the lower, the lowest ranked teams in the top 25 coming in but they were playing on a pretty high level this past weekend uh, with a very competitive matchup against one another and throughout the weekend. So shout out to those teams. Let's take a look at the standings. Just want to know it's only me tonight. Uh, Ross Collins is not available for tonight's show, uh, but we are here at the studio live and ready to go for the next three nights worth of shows. 
We'll talk about that more in a minute. But here's the standings at the end of Saturday. Bad Boys was first place, 2-0, and over, plus 14. Um, South Side, 2-0, and over, plus 8. Hey, big shot of the South Side. Second place out of all seven of the B teams there. Pretty good performance. Got to win on Baez. That is something that they can be proud of, getting a ranked win against a team that has been in the top 15 all year in Baez Auto. Um, albeit some growing pains for Baez early on in that game, which is the adjustment from Ray Wagner to Caleb Walton. Um, but overall, I really liked what I saw out of Southside day one. Baez did bounce back and actually had the highest point of retro in a plus 20. The Venom game padding a lot of that. Uh, you talk about a game that could have gone different ways. If Baez gets those conversions, uh, more likely than not, they come out there and actually, in my opinion, they get that win on South Side and they're sitting there to one seed. You got to think about it. Sometimes just the smallest things, a missed conversion is all that cost Baez Auto for being the one seed. And that would have altered the tournament completely for day two. Baez would have been the one. Bad Boys would have slid down to the second seed. You would have had Southside sitting probably at about third. Um, FOE fourth, Titans fifth. That would have been a bit of an alteration. Um, Bad Boys would have played Venom as the 2 7 matchup. Uh, Southside would have drawn Gusto Land instead. And so you would have had some radically different uh, 2 7 3 6 games there with the possibility that the Maryland Titans Baez game would have been a semifinal instead. Crazy to think about just how one point could alter the landscape of an entire tournament like that. Those misconversions by Baez Auto were very huge because it cost Baez the one seed. And by costing Baez the one seed, you had a lot of matchups that got shuffled in the end because of that. Like I said, Bad Boys would have played Venom instead. That would have been the 2-7 matchup. You would have had Southside playing Gusto Land. How those turn out, we don't know. Who could we be seeing on the other side of that bracket? Baez Titans. Is it a different matchup if Baez comes into that game uh, on a break, having scouted the Titans against FOE beforehand? <sighs> Who knows, man? Just so many things can just change in just one missed play. Crazy how much it bit Baez in a way. One could have said maybe it would have been different. Who knows? We definitely would have had a different championship matchup. That is for certain. We would not have had the same two teams. Um, and I get the feeling you would have seen some interesting matchups in that semis too. And a possible very much interesting championship game. Much different one at that. So, crazy. Look at the rest of it. FOE was four, fat one and one minus one. I know Titans had a larger margin. Technically speaking, FOE should have the advantage due to the head-to-head -head there. So that's how I placed it. I'm not sure how Kent had it, but that's how I pay, uh, placed it based on how I would think it'd be done. FOE having the head-to-head -head win on Titans gives them, gives them leverage on terms of record over point differential there. Since necessarily the three-way tie was broken when Baez won that by a large margin. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody. So that's what we got going right now. Um, I'm really excited to see like how day two ends up progressing for a lot of these guys. Let's take a look how that went. Because Gusto Land, you took a look, disappointing result there. 0 and 2, minus 14. Maryland Venom, minus 28. Rough Saturday for Venom and Gusto. Uh, Sunday B results. Here we go. We're going to go start with the day of Maryland Titans and FOE. Rematch a lot different. We talk about rematch theory, theory that is TH, not an F. Um, it is very difficult to beat a team twice in a weekend or even twice in a season or even twice in a day, mostly because of the fact that the burden of trying to make adjustments is usually on the winning team. The losing team has to make changes. The winning team doesn't. And that's a bad thing sometimes. Sometimes you go into a mindset of we did everything we could to win the first game. What more can we do to win the second if they figure out what we were doing at the end? That happens a lot of times. The team narrowly escapes the first matchup because they did the right thing at the end to win. But they usually don't make the adjustments they need to win on day two. 
or even later on in the season. That's why more often than not, when you see a lot of rematches and playoff games, it's different. One team adjusted, the other didn't. Titans get the win here, 21-13. Did not get a glimpse of this game. I was on the A championship field at the time this was being played. Um, but they came out, got revenge on FOE, and come out strong to start. Venom and Southside. Venom gets revenge as well, 20-12. to Rematch theory, guys. Rematch theory. Saturday and Sunday, that changeover. Once again, we go back to that bracket alteration. Um, Southside would have played Gusto and instead. Venom would have gotten bad boys, and this helps out Venom because they knew exactly what they needed to do to beat Southside on day two. That's where veteran experience comes in. That's where intelligence comes in, high football IQ. Those who are able to make those necessary adjustments to win on day two are usually some of the well-coached teams, some well-put-together teams in that regard. Intelligence goes a long ways. Learn from your mistakes, guys. And that's what Titans and Venom did. They get their revenge on FOE at Southside. They topple them there to advance to the semis. Baez and Gusto Land. Hey, we talked about it. York crowned two champions, an eight man up there on uh, Sunday in the wreck and comp. Shout out to the Jungle Boys for winning wreck and shout out to the Zombies for winning comp. But the nine man champion goes to Baez Auto in the circuit when it comes to there. The 20 to nothing win over Gusto Land. That game. Early on was pretty competitive. Gusto was hanging in there. Uh, Steve Dunham coming out there and playing quarterback. We know from ground zero over YFFL. Trying to make that crossover in a nine-man. He shows a lot of potential, but his team was just not ready. This was a this was a shell of what Gusto was. And we'll talk about that in a minute because Gusto land is not what it used to be. And I don't think we're going to see it get to the heights they were at ever again. What I saw over the weekend was just a team that looked like it was at its end. A lot of new faces. So you could also say maybe the YAFFL bowl up there hurt. But at the same time, what is the future of Gusto, man? We'll talk about that in a minute. Semifinals. Maryland Titans, bad boys. Titans get the win, 33-19. I watched this game, uh, actually. I was on the field for this one. This was awesome to watch. A nice little competitive back and forth. Carlton and Eddie doing everything they can to keep uh, the bad boys in and on offense. But Doc was just slinging the ball all over. Uh, this was an epic game to watch. Uh, and I got to tell you, the receiving core um, this past weekend, the Titans really stepped up in a big way on Sunday. That offense was clicking on all cylinders. This was a team that came ready to play. We talked about it, the Titans on Sunday all year. They had always ran into issues. Um, usually it was Rampage, which looking back now, it's a lot of reflection. This says a lot about how good the Titans are um, to start because the biggest obstacle they usually had was Rampage. The one other tournament wasn't them. It was the Browns, and the tournament where the Browns were playing at a very high level, perhaps their highest level of the season. It was not the Browns team that performed performance-wise that showed up to – Rhode Island a couple weeks ago. This Browns, that Browns team was playing extremely well. But Maryland Titans, uh, they stepped in a big way, getting a win on the Bad Boys, 33-19. Bad Boys, their offense seems like it's starting to get into a rhythm. Defense, though, struggling in this one. Um, very good competitive matchup, though, on field two. I was glad to be a part of that one. Uh, fifth game of the day, rematch theory. Not on Venom's side this time. As Baez gets to win 21-12, albeit you get the result. Venom played a much better game in day two. Uh, Baez went up by three scores early, but Venom rallied back, pulled within nine, and in the end just fell short. Not enough time, not enough points, but just enough for Baez to get the dub. 21-12. Venom eliminated, albeit give a shout out to those guys. They travel to every tournament. Maryland Venom is at almost every tournament. They were at OC. They were back at Nationals. They were at AC. Uh, they weren't at Albany, but not a lot of teams from down here go up to Albany. It's kind of a tough travel for a lot of guys. Um, around that time, there was just – Charm City was happening a week later, so it was a lot of – it was kind of hard to flex that for those guys. Um, of course, they played in their home tournament, the Charm City Classic. They did Rhode Island a few weeks ago. Uh, I believe the only team to have played in both Rhode Island and the Capital Classic, Maryland Venom. Uh, Capital Classic, a good performance overall. They got a couple wins. They got wins at both of them, actually. 
uh, Saturday win in Rhode Island and a Sunday win in Capital Classic. So I give some respect to Maryland Benham in the end here. Just falling short as Baez gets the dub. Championship game. Maryland Titans getting the win 1914. This game was pretty lopsided early. The Titans were flat out dominating Baez. Uh, the offensive line for the Titans, or Baez rather early on, struggling with uh, trying to contain the defensive line of the Maryland Titans. Uh, there was an adjustment, though, at halftime. They made a switch, brought in Jason Brady, who we usually see over here in the fourth state with the X-Dogs. Uh, he usually plays the line both ways, and he did that for Baez on Sunday. The adjustment worked. The line held up a little bit better, but the problem with Baez was execution. Too many drops. So many. There was at least four drops in that final drive by both teams combined. And for the Titans, the offense started out on fire early on. Second half stagnated a little bit. Bias's defense started to settle in. The pass rush was starting to get there a little bit. Um, Doc threw a very critical pick in that fourth quarter, one that nearly cost the Titans a game. But thankfully, the pull down was made. Um, I think Doc was the one who made the pull, if I may be mistaken. I may be wrong on that. If I am, let me know, guys. I just have an odd memory of that. Uh, these tournaments kind of happen in a bit of a haze for me at times. I'll go through them. And I remember certain details, but not all. Uh, I believe he maybe was the one who got the pool, though. Um, Baez had an opportunity late, but I was able to see the play. I was on the sideline for what it's worth. I remember seeing the catch I was made, but I was so far on the sideline, it was hard to get the proper angle for me. But let me know on that in the comments. But Baez had an opportunity late. It started out in the 21, got a first down very quickly. Both teams had a combined four drops, two by the Titans, two by Baez in the fourth quarter where it just went off both hands. You had one play where a pick nearly happened for the Titans, but it was almost a Baez touchdown too. Just how close this game was was insane, man. This was one of the best games of the day, probably the best in the B of the day. Um very underrated championship game. Some might say it was a bit of a blowout um, for the most part. I disagree with that assessment. I think this was a very competitive matchup. And in the end, the Titans just narrowly get out, 1914. But I got to give it up for them. This was their weekend. And honestly, I had talked about it. And this was something I had hyped up in the week leading up. Uh, we posted the other day the video of the Maryland Titans or not Maryland Titans, but rather too much talent, a team that I played with in Hagerstown in 2016, our first game too much talent against the Maryland Titans on that Saturday, had to face them again in the semifinals, lost that game. Titans went on to beat the red Knights in the championship this past weekend, Saturday marked five years to the day. The Maryland Titans won what was their first and only circuit championship at the time and became their only one until Sunday when the Maryland Titans once again took a November DMV tournament, this time winning the Capital Classic. They become one of the few teams to have won both the Mason-Dixon and the Cap Classic in the first few years of its existence. We talked about it. I was there. Back in 2016, when the Titans beat the Red Knights to win it all, um, at least 15 of the Titans players who were there on Sunday were there back when the Titans won it all in 2016. And I'll tell you, that sideline was extremely emotional. Um, those guys really, really wanted it. And we talked about reflection. Go back to where the team was a year ago. They were in the quarterfinals out with – against Renegades, both in OMFFL and in the Clash of York tournament that year. Coming to Nationals, there was a lot of uncertainty. And then Doc came over. That was a big signing. He, him and Aftermath had a fallout, a part of ways. Who knows? I wasn't there. Um, but either way, that move has worked out for him and the Titans in a very big way in the one year since that move has happened. And we saw the impact right away with how they came out at Nationals with a new look. We talked about it, Locke stepping down. Uh, Locke Edwards, who had came out for years playing this quarterback for the Titans. He was the guy who took up there at 16. He stepped down from the starting role, went to tight end, uh, recently came back from 
injury, I do believe, back in September. Um, he was there on Sunday. Very emotional day for him and all the Titan players. Doc as well. He talked about it. He's not sure of his 20th or his 30th championship. He's done lost track already. The resume he's put in, I'm not sure if, how many quarterbacks have a championship in five different decades playing flag. But I believe a case can be made that Doc has won in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 10s, and 20s now. We talk about it. 56 years old. He's been in the game since 1985. That veteran experience coming over and taking the role of quarterback. We saw what the impact is had on the offense. They've been able to move the ball. There are times where the picks happen. But we see interceptions a lot in this game. They just tend to pop up at random moments for a lot of the better quarterbacks. You'll never see it coming, and then it just happens. But he makes up for it in the end. He turns it around. He puts up the points. He competes with the best. We saw how the Maryland Titans competed at the Nationals. They scored the upset on ride out in the Sweet 16. Only the fall to Rampage, who had a very loaded team in that one, who knew what they had to do to win it. You go back to Ocean City. Titans came out there. They performed as well. OMFA fell back in the spring. They were comp- they were out there battling and beating teams like the Scorpions and the Misfits. They were out there competing with Rampage and the Elite Rebels. They were showing that they were just up there of everybody else. They beat right out, I do believe, that season as well. The Titans this year have gone through a major transformation in a big way. And you can see this is a rejuvenated franchise. This is one that is playing at a very high level right now in that B division and is coming in strong in the Nationals. Albeit that B bracket is going to be a gauntlet at Nationals. We'll see if they can carry that momentum in. Take a look at these final standings. Great effort overall overall for this team. Titans finished 4-1 with a plus 28. Baez, once again, bridesmaid. That's one of the, my dad always told me one of the most frustrating things for him as a coach is finishing with second place and having some of the best numbers in the tournament or even a season, but still just finishing just short. And Baez coming up short in her third nine man championship in a row, uh, three and two overall, plus 43 for the weekend. The Venom game was a huge booster with that one, the plus 21, um, and the Gusto end game as well. But I can't really hate on Baez, man. Those guys really were out there put on the effort. Just a tough draw in that championship. That Titans team was hungry. They were ready. Um, so it was, I get where Baez was, but I don't think they were on the same level as they were on terms of play-wise that we had seen back in the summer or in OC. I think this out of the three Baez teams I've seen on the tournament, or rather four, I think this one wasn't quite – ready to win it but that being said this is a seed to grow into something more and you keep developing Caleb you keep running with your guys just keep doing what you got to do things will work out keep the recruiting going evolve your game I'm not sure what their plans are after this year Baez could still be one of the better teams in the area they a lot of people were doubting them last year when they came in the clash of York and no one knew what they were because they hadn't appeared all year since nationals, since worlds rather. They came in though and they beat Gusto Land, show they were still kings of their city. They got to the semis, fell just short to aftermath. They've competed every tournament this year, they battle main event. It's a team that definitely has shown they can get there. But so far, they've not quite broken through yet. It takes a while, though. Ask the Titans. They had a long way, too. Bad Boys third, two and one. They have a plus zero by the end of it. Bad Boys offense starting to get it together. Defense looking a little shaky, though. Uh, We'll see what ends up happening with them going to Nationals. I still like what the Bad Boys could do, but at the same time, they still need to get something down on defense. And I think that they have that potential to make some sort of run, maybe sneak into the quarterfinals. They're definitely a team that you got to watch out for. 
Maryland Venom, one and three, minus 29. That's going to be their best tournament all year on terms of uh, finishing. Um, that bias game really sensed that 29. They were actually pretty competitive outside of that one all weekend. And they had opportunities, man. Like Venom, Venom really shined out. Like I said, I give those guys a lot of respect. They go to every tournament that's on the circuit. Um, they play league ball. Those guys work their asses off. And I give them a lot of respect. Respect. Wow. Respect. Put some respect on the name. Oh, my gosh. I can't even say T sounds right now. I've been talking too long. Let's get a guest on here. Make it easier for me to talk a little bit. Let's get him on. Joining us right now from the Maryland Titans. Now part of the list of players who have won both the Mason Dixon Classic and the Capital Classic. Mr. Locke Edwards. Locke, welcome to the show. Hello. Can you hear me? I got you, Locke. Can you hear me? Hold up. All good, man. I can't hear you, though. Can you hear me? I hear you. You got me? I got you, but it sounds like it says your service like you is a little uh, rough over there. It says like a Bluetooth or something. Now Hello? you said, how about now? Oh, there, you go. there you go. All right, perfect, perfect. Yeah, sorry about that. It takes a little bit sometimes. What's going on with you? Nothing much, man. Nice little night here at the house. Uh com. Got loans. Hello there. <laughs> All good, man. Um Getting ready for this weekend. Had a good time this past weekend. Just ready for nationals at this point. Like we get to like a we get to a heightened moment like Sunday, the intensity, the fun, the action. And then just it's the letdown after we realize, man, that was the last tournament for the rest of this year till nationals. Right, right. Definitely can't wait till nationals, man. Count down the days. Facts, man. Facts. We're about, I'd say, six weeks away at this point for Nationals. Getting there. Also joining us, like Mr. Troy Carroll. Welcome to the show. Played guard for Titans over the weekend. Got himself a B championship on his home field. Big congratulations. What's up, big fella? Are you on here or are you in the I think Troy, Troy, I see your lips moving, but I don't hear any audio. Nah, I just don't see your lips moving. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. you. Yeah, I got you. you hear me now? Yeah, right, I got it. you. Here we go. A lot of people don't know, but me and Locke are beef, beefing right now. Huh? Me and Locke still beefing right now. Come on, yo, let that shit go. <laughs> Look, listen, during that bad boys game, right? It was it four and boys, one man. from the 20 yard line. It was under two minutes. They didn't have no timeouts. And guess what this man did? He scored a touchdown. I wanted to kick his ass so bad. It was F it was an FOE game, right? Was it? I thought it was. Bad yeah. boys. Yeah, it was a first game. No, the That's bad boys, we was we was up by like 18. We we won 33 20. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was uh FOE. But yeah, we was up a point and this man scored a touchdown, but all we needed was a yard. Damn, dude. Why you do that? I fucked In it the up. moment. <laughs> In the moment. <laughs> I fucked up. Yeah, he, put his arm, he put his arm around me and was like, you know you're supposed to uh, stop, right? I'm like, dang, you right. I'm fucked. I don't know. What was the over-under on that game? Don't get me lying. Oh, you know no, who I, I had one. I just wanted to beat him because uh, they, they kind of gave us that work. Uh, Sarah. Yeah, thoughts on uh, both games from Saturday to Sunday. What were the biggest differences between both games? 
I feel like we got it together in the second half on the uh, against FOE uh, Saturday, and then it carried over into Sunday. Honestly, like we really, we really we struggle we struggled we struggled bad in that first half Saturday, but then we got it together that second half and we rolled since then. They kind of um, bullied us up and down the field, sir. Yeah, respecting them dudes. I ain't even gonna hold you. I trolled them dudes a lot, but I ain't gonna lie. Those are my boys over there. I respect them a lot. No, FOE, they, they got they got a squad over there. Definitely can't yeah, they, they definitely got a championship in there. Uh, they'll have one in their hands eventually. Soon, I believe. It takes time. Like, we talk about it. The B division is so competitive at this point. It's so deep in terms of the competition. Like, you never know what you get from one tournament to the next. And especially when you got all these new teams popping up. Yeah, yeah that's, like, like Locke just said, it's the beauty in it. That's why I really don't, I don't really got a preference between playing A and B. I know, A, I'm going to get a little bit more smoke, but the B game would be way more competitive. Yeah, like the B game, like has evolved so much in the last few years. Like, on terms of the parity and on terms of the different kind of matchups you're going to get. Like, some years it used to be you always you would get a pool play of lead teams just by coincidental draw or random draw. Lately, we've been able to see teams be able to play a lot more from across other leagues and other areas, which I think has resulted in a lot of growth of the game. And as a result, you're getting more competitive games because guys are getting exposure to other teams and everybody's learning about each other so quickly. Right. Uh, Capital, albeit, is very much a localized tournament, um, which – has always been the case with the November tournaments down here, even going back to the old days of Nine Man uh, with states way back in the day. Always been a localized thing. Um, but I could consider it like a fall regional, but it's always good to have yeah. a tournament like this at the end. Because this pretty, this pretty much took a place of Hagerstown, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, this is the replacement for Hagerstown. And I think it's actually helped that it's changed locations. I felt like despite it being like only 15 minutes from me and it was rough to lose our local tournament, I do think it's better for November because I felt like Hagerstown in November and compared to D.C. Yeah. It's no slight. It's just I felt like looking oh, back no. at it. What's that? It was a couple years in Hagerstown. It was uh like 70 degrees on Sunday. It felt like. When? I'm about to say, what are you talking about? My memories of Hagerstown are freezing rain and snow and <laughs> oh no it, it definitely be cold but i'm saying it's, it's been some times when i'm like oh it, it ain't that cool i do say if hagerstown had been like a spring or summer tournament somewhere between like may and august i think it would have worked a lot better in a lot of regards the teams coming over i think remember a lot of guys just had that one remember yeah. when they had that one in hagerstown in the summer I think they did way back in the day. Uh, they used to have it at some point. I don't know what I don't know if something changed over time, but I always felt like that would have been something better. But I think moving down to Capital by Tucker has been beneficial for a lot of the teams in the area to travel down there more. Um, and as a result, I feel like we've gotten back to back really competitive tournaments down there. Um, and this past weekend, I feel like it was one of the best I've seen all year on terms of just how competitive the games were, how much intensity everybody had, and the overall emotion of it. Like, this felt very much a circuit-level tournament. Definitely. Yeah. It was definitely um, definitely some good games out there. Definitely. I ain't going to lie. We, we pretty much we went through a gauntlet on Sunday. We pretty much – we went through it. We uh, – and this is not a disrespect to no team out there. I feel like we played the three toughest teams in, in the B bracket on Sunday. Yeah, coming in, I actually had them as the top three in the B because on, on how I was doing the uh, power rankings, those teams so were the top three. three. Who you had us at? I had Titans at 27. I was kind of questioning it. And on top of that, a lot of North teams were starting to jump in. And so were a lot of teams across the country. So Titans kind of got lost in the shuffle as more – 
nine man teams started becoming eligible around the area around the country in general. Twenty seven out of twenty nine. Nah, twenty seven out of uh, my rank is up to fifty two right now. Oh, uh, oh, you yeah. did the whole nine man. Yeah, all nine man teams who've entered a tournament that had teams from other leagues and not just a tournament of one league. Like, say, if Oman Phil had just a one, a two day tournament of just league teams, that wouldn't count. That'd be just some kind of weird exhibition at that point. Right. But, like, say, but I do count the circuit ones, obviously, but I'll also look into stuff like wins and league play. Cause I know people say league play is different than circuit ball. Which is true, it is. At the same time, every tournament's different. Not everybody's going to have the same exact roster every tournament. And you never know who's going to have what and when. And I felt like with league ball, there's times when I go out there over for fail and always mills, and everybody's treating it just like a circuit ball and playing on that intensity, that high level of play. And I don't know how it is in other leagues. I feel like Looking at it, though, it has a lot of context and helps evaluate where teams could stand with everybody else. I don't try to do like an A or B split because it's hard to keep track for me at that point. At this point, because so many teams are jumping in and out depending on locality and who they have. Um, but it's something we're working on right now. But I had uh, those three Baez. Obviously, we saw what they were doing all year. Ocean City runner-up. They competed with main event over in Kenwood back in August. They already knocked them off. Um, they performed very well in York, actually, a month ago before following the rampage in that semis. Um, but also above Bad Boys and FOE. But it's a very tight margin between you guys, FOE, and them. It wasn't really like a large gap, just like – I would nudge it towards those two for the moment. Bad boys with momentum, you know, quarterfinals, OMF and Phil. Um, yeah, bad boys had knocked us out the playoffs in our old league. So, I mean, I can understand that. Bay's always a good team. Yeah. Yeah, they always try. I don't think I ever seen them get blown up. After we good, too, they scrappy. Yeah, they've been performing. They've been performing pretty well down the Tucker all year. Coming into it as well, I think on yep. their home field they were like twelve and six uh, this year. They were second place both seasons down there. Um, they got put out first round in the spring. I can tell you that. I know. I know that for a fact. Yeah, yeah you and Southside put them out. But, what do you think uh, of Southside and how they're doing so far uh, with playing tournament ball this year? Uh, well, I talked to Lamont. He said he's going to try to get out a little bit more, actually. I uh, like that. It's, it's an experience thing with them. It's, yeah. it's, it's really experience. A lot of them dudes only play at Tucker Road. I think other than Jalen, I don't think anybody else on that team plays outside of Tucker Road unless they play eight-man. Some A lot of the dudes play eight-man, too, but for the most part, they don't play – most of them do only play at Tucker Rose, so it's more of an experience thing with them. I get that. And I and in late ball, like, I think for a lot of those guys, it can be hard to travel at times. But I feel, I'm glad they're starting to get out more because I've seen them play a good bit this year, and they definitely have shown they can compete in that B division with different teams. And I think it's really good for those guys to get out there and have that experience because while it's, while league ball, I feel like is the heart and soul of flag football. Yeah. The tournament ball is where you grow yourself and learn the world of the sport. Exactly. And, and I feel like, they, like I yeah. talked to them dudes. I was talking to them on the sideline. That they love they love playing other teams. Once they they ain't got to see people from home. They love it. I can imagine. It brings out a whole new intensity. It gives you that old feeling of playing like high school football back in the day. and You're going on the road in a Friday night game or even on the college level. You get that thrill and excitement of playing someone you've never seen before. Or even a big name comes to town and you have a game on the schedule. You hear a lot about these guys, but you don't know, but you've never seen them. And that mystery and intrigue is what adds a lot of fun to the whole factor of it. Honestly, I think that's how they beat Baez Saturday because 
Baez looked, they looked a little bit lost on defense. Baez seemed like they were restarting from a different point in time because their defense was a little off. Their secondary was very shaky in the Titans game. Um, Venom seemingly came back on them. I don't have a really a full analysis on that game because I wasn't on the field for it. Um, they had shut down Gusto Land, but Gusto Land at this point, I don't think is going to make it another tournament. I think they're on one of those teams that might be meeting its end soon. But I hope they're going to come back. I like what those guys can do. What were your all's impressions on Gusto Land over the weekend? They played us tough too. We only beat them seven nothing. Seven, yeah, seven nothing. It's, That's they, they, they one of them teams. I feel like. They one pitch away because you know they they run a lot of eight man stuff. So they look for it. A lot of their stuff come off of broken plays. So it, it one they one of them teams where it's, it's just one. They just waiting on that one play, one play, one play, and then it's once they get the roll in, it's roll. They they got it. That was actually key to a lot of their success back in uh, 2019 when they first came onto the scene. Um, they've had a lot of big play potential. We had that game with them in the Misfits up in uh, the Winter Chiller two years ago where they came out full throttle against the Misfits. And that team that Regan had out there, they was just as loaded as some of the teams he's had all year. Um, and with the Gusto Land squad that day, they only lost that game 26-25. They had a miss at the end. And they the one thing about this that to me was their offense would be clicking on all cylinders whenever – when they start executing, it's hard to stop them. Unfortunately, though, I don't. It's not the same exact attack I see anymore. They seem like they made a bit of changes. I saw they had Steve out there day two. Um, I don't know. Was he? Out, was it Bob? Was it Bob or him out there day one? I don't know if you guys know the difference. Uh, it was. It was uh, Steve, and they were doing like a kind of like with the uh, Misfits dude. They yeah, all double quarterback QB thing. Okay. The only kind of, difference between them and Memphis, their their QB once he throws it, he runs the route. And I ain't gonna go lie, they was killing us with it. Interesting. I, saw, I kind of want to see if someone may have gotten film on that game because I want to see how that may have turned out. They didn't seem like they were doing too much of that on day two. Uh, their biggest struggle to me seemed like not having enough offensive linemen to compete in the trenches. That's something that it seems like they may need, but. I will say a lot of those teams that come down here from York are very fundamentally sound on terms of flag pooling and being able to make plays when need be. Um, so we talked Gusto, we talked FOE. Thoughts on the Bad Boys game? Man, that game was crazy. Eddie went crazy. Man, listen, Eddie that boy, crazy. him, Willie, Jaleel, oh, yo. Hey, that's my actual. That's actually my first time seeing Carlton playing quarterback live. That was, oh, Carlton can play. Carlton <laughs> can play anywhere. Like. He's doing a really good job stepping up with them right now. Like I had talked about it, their offense had hit a wall over the course of the spring and summer. Like toward the end of OMFFL, uh, back in the spring, they went on a bit of a decline that ran all the way through Charm City Classic. I felt like, though, in the fall up there in Baltimore, they started putting something together. And we saw back a clash of York uh, three last month. They managed to get to the semifinals. And controversy or not, they did beat the Misfits in that quarterfinal game in a game where Carlton, I'll be honest, called one of the best and executed one of the best game plans I'd ever seen. And what would, and what on paper – all year long had been a mismatch in games. They stepped up and pulled off the upset there. You, of course, both uh, – I know, uh, Locke, you played against them in OMFFL in the quarterfinals as well. What's the biggest differences you're seeing in this bad boys team compared to where they were in the sp- – compared to where they had been? I don't know if you had seen much of them back in the spring or not footage-wise. Um, but what are your impressions of where they're at right now? I mean, the talent is, is, is there. It's just, I don't, I don't know. I can't really speak on that. I mean, what they doing right now with Carlton at QB and Eddie, Jaleel, and Willie at the receiver position, they they doing, 
they they doing well. I like what they got going on over there. And the defense is always going to be solid when you got Brandon running it. So Facts. They, they got a bunch of talent over there. It's, it's all about putting it together. Yeah. And I feel like they're starting to get somewhere with that. It's just going to be – I think the deep secondary was the biggest struggle on – Sunday for them. It just seemed like they could not get any sort of stops against you guys. Well, I think that was well, not to down anybody, but I think that was just more more so of us. Like all our receivers were balling all weekend. Like and then Sunday, I just felt like we wouldn't have lost to nobody. Nobody. Like we was we was clicking. Like Doc was on a, on another planet, and we had Capone, Tay, Scooby. I don't want to leave nobody out. Dre, all them young guys was just killing. All I mean, I don't think it was nothing nobody could have did with us Sunday. I agree with that. Like that, the offense was on fire, and it was to a point where. I felt like it was the best I had seen the Titans all year, period. And that says a lot considering how great the team was playing all year round. And this was to me like the culmination of all the work that had been done. And I feel like it puts you guys in a really good place coming into Nationals where you're coming off a tournament where the offense is at the point where it's at its best and – it can only get better at nationals if the proper adjustments can be made. Of course, the matchups, we don't know what it's going to be in store. There's going to be about 28 other teams and what is going to be probably one of the most interesting B nine man nationals to date. Yeah. We, we were talking about that today, how, how many good teams are in the B this year in Florida. But I feel like if we play like how we played Sunday, we're going to be a tough out for anybody. I agree with that 100%. I agree with that because the Maryland Titans have shown it this year. You guys have shown you can compete with not only the teams in B, but some of the A teams in this area. You've shown you can compete with the elite Rebels. You can compete with the Misfits. Beating the Misfits, in fact, 2-0 and against them so far this year in league ball. Some may discount that, but they come out with their guys just as much, too. Um, you know, yeah, but being the uh... – I haven't beaten the Elite Rebels yet, though. That is true. You guys to compete. I think you guys competed against them uh, both times, though. They were like yeah. close. They were close games, and that's the thing about yeah, it is absolutely. being able to hang with those A teams up there and locally is a good measurement of what you can do come tournament time. They'll give you the best workout because they're facing the best on tournament ball, and then you're ended up facing a team that's getting that kind of experience and work itself. And that's only going to elevate your game. Yeah, and in fact, absolutely. I think the Titans have gotten a couple wins on the Scorpions this year as well. Um, we beat them once in the spring in the regular season. Then we went to triple overtime with them in the playoffs. That was they a great game. Them. Yeah, they won that. One. That was a that was a battle though. That was a war of attrition. Yeah, that was a great game. Great game. So, Locke, you were there in 2016. Yep. Memories of winning Mason Dixon 16. That year where you guys beat too much talent, Red Knights. I don't know who else was on that second bracket with you guys. It was just them two. We played. Oh, you, so you had us both of them play. Both. We only played them two teams Saturday and Sunday. Actually. Ah, that's rough. That's, I always hate getting a tournament where you get the same two teams both times. Damn. Yeah. Memories of it? It was cold as hell. That is an absolute fact. I remember the freezing rain on day one alone was just brutal. That was that was probably one of the coldest Hagas towns I've been a part of. I remember, but, um, yeah. But it, yeah. it was always a great battle when we uh, went up against Andy. That's when Andy was running the Red Knights. 
and that was actually two months prior to him taking them to the uh, B national championship game too. Yeah, that's when um, Tay Sosa had just started. He was on the Red Knights. Um, Black. Black was with him too, right? Yeah, yeah. Black. Larry was there. Larry was there? He was? Yeah, Larry was there. Okay. Man, boys really came with a bum. Way back when, man. I, I think that was 2016. Wow. Five years ago now. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, that was that was a uh, that was a good one. Someone's trying Ooh. to jump in on this call. See what he has oh, to say. Ooh. Speak your name. Ah! <laughs> oh, the OG. What's up? What's good? My boy. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Oh, look at the hamburger. This won't be like you when I grow up. Nah, hey man, <laughs> shit, you about to be underground, man. My ass old. <laughs> shit. You still get it done though. Nah, man, my time is winding down. Come on, Brock, you got at least three, four years left. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm not sure if Brock's got it anymore. Nah, nah, I ain't got that. I ain't got that much time. I got, I got to get back in the gym. Yo, one, one of my teammates said, yo, yo, when you got out on, on Sunday, of course, I went there Saturday. They said, yo, it looked like you were power walking. I was like, I know my time is going down. <laughs> Instead of running, he said I was power walking. I was like, yo, I'm done. <laughs> hey, man, hey. Arm, huh? I don't... That don't hurt your arm, though. You still slay no, that. No, no, but you know that was one of my attributes, Lock. Yes, you know that. True. Getting out. Hey, man. Hey, for real, yo. Hey, I wanted to step on, man. Hey, congratulations, y'all. Y'all did y'all thing. Yo, I'm, I'm so proud of y'all, man. Y'all, y'all got that chip. Y'all got that that motherfucking dreaded monkey off y'all back. Y'all finally got one. I'm so proud of y'all, man. Yo, it, it, it does my heart good, man. Hey, Troy, man, way, to out, way to help out to your boys, yo. Hopefully, hopefully you over there for them for Florida too, man. Yeah, it, I'm it trying. Like, it, it look like a good look, man. Here we go. Trying to get them over there for Florida, man. Hey, hey, need, this this right here. I don't hey, know if I'm bro, going. Two years ago, man. Hey, this this tournament built momentum for us to to win nationals. I'm just saying. That's that's definitely the goal. Just saying, man. This like tournament told, that we won, same like thing I that y'all Joey. just won this past weekend. Hey, I'm not even hold on. You want me to tell y'all what got me over here to the Titans? Nobody else when, wanted. Nah, it wasn't that. We put. I played with Ryan. I played with Ryan Page in Baltimore. Right. I played with Ryan Page in Baltimore. We played them um, on Sunday. I think was it Sunday we played them. We played yeah. them on Sunday. I gained some respect for them boys on Sunday. They, they put some respect in me. No boss. No boss. Yeah. God damn. Hey, I gained some, I gained big respect for them boys. I said, and I told Charles that day, I said, come on, fuck with y'all. So Yo, like them boys, they gave it, they gave, they gave us a they gave us a game. Hey, 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 for real. They've been doing this shit for since I've been in. Since they were like I, said, I, ne I never saw it in person, but <clears throat> when I do. I realized I gained a lot of respect for him that day. No, I told what I'm saying like, is, ain't nothing changed. That's the thing. Ain't nothing changed for what? What? Like about shit? About 15 years? Damn yeah, near. It's been, it's been about that, yeah. Bro, ain't nothing changed. Always, always tough. Always tough. Always tough against them. And they always out there. They they. They play the game like it's supposed to be played. Definitely. That's 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 what I love about those guys, man. That's what I love about those guys, man. Hey, but look, man. Hey, I just want to step on here and congratulate y'all, man. Hey, please, please take that same unit to Florida. Now, keep in mind, though, the same teams that were in there, that 1A, they're going to be in the B. Supposedly, you know, Rampage and uh, P. 
European meat. Yeah, I think y'all, y'all, right. can, y'all can get them. Listen, and I feel like this. If we come out there and play like how we played Sunday, we exactly. gonna get top out. Any, any given time. Sunday. Y'all give Doc that time. Top out. Y'all give Doc that time, man. And them weapons on the outside, oh my God, man. Mm-hmm. And y'all defense stay scrappy, so. Yeah. And, and, and you already know the guy, the eye in the sky. You know I mean, let's say, uh, you know, threes up. That's all I'm gonna say. Absolutely, <laughs> you already know what it is. You know what I mean? So, so, so you already got somebody up, up there looking down, so. Yes, sir. <laughs> Shit. Man, y- hey, y- 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 y'all good, man. Congratulations, y'all. Love the Titan family, man. Joey. Yes, glad you losing weight, man. Glad you losing some weight, man. You look good, man. <laughs> thank look you, thank good, you, man. Hey, hey, continue doing, man. Health is wealth, man. Health is wealth. I know. Hey, y- y'all thank stay you, blessed, man. All right, thank all, right. You, all right. Greg Proctor joining the show. Thank you, Greg. Any other thoughts, gentlemen? No, sir. I'm about to get up out of here to get back to work. Yeah, I, I just want to say, um, um, Ramon Richardson don't get enough credit for what he do for this team for the Maryland Titans. Like without him, I don't even think we'd be where we at right now. And I mean that. Mm-hmm. I mean he, of course, we got the core guys that always been around, but he brung all the new talent. He do a lot for the, the squad, so. I think he need to get more recognition for that. He does great and work. Defense, and our defense always is the heart of the team. So, like, how – and, of course, we didn't want to pick at the end. Yeah. But how the defense, you know, won the game, and um, I wouldn't have had it no other way. You know what I mean? So they always – they always holding it down for us. Always. All right, y'all boys, B, I'm about to get up out of here. All right, good brother. I'll see you in All Florida. Right. Huh? i see you in Florida. If I go. We'll see if I go. All right, good brother. All right. All right. See you, Troy. Right. And see you, Locke. All right, good brother. I'll see you in Florida, too. If I go. I know, I know the conversation we had, but I'm, <laughs> yeah. speaking it to, I'm speaking it into his existence. Doing the best I can. We're going to get there, though. We're going to have some fun this year. Right. Or next year, actually. It's next year, the event is. <laughs> We're at the end of the year now, finally. Uh, all right, man. You have a go. All right, you too, Locke. Uh-huh. Troy Carroll and Locke Edwards joining the show. Pull the PowerPoint back up. Let's go fast forward. We've talked about B bracket. Let's do A now. Results of A starting out with Misfits beating right out. The reported score I got was 27 25. This was a back and forth, bit of a shootout in the first half. It was 21 18 at halftime in favor of Misfits. Bit of a slowdown in the second. Both defenses settled in. At the end of the day, Misfits with the win. Elite Rebels won the second game, 22-6. to six. Um, Elite Rebels, explosive on offense. Hot out the gate against right out. Right out offensively. It's hit a bit of a wall after that first half of the Misfits game. Not the same afterwards. Uh, Rebels get the win after that. However, they fall to the Misfits right after 27-13. They were up 13-7 at half, but uh, Chris Boone and company exploded in the second half for three scores and the victory. Scorpions over Playmakers Elite seven to six. Didn't get a chance to watch much of this process. He wasn't there either. Um, seemed like a bit of an old school nine man matchup. Low scoring all defense. Playmakers Elite fourteen Rampage seven. Uh, another game I wasn't really there for. Chris Price wasn't there either for Rampage. So a bit of a throwaway between those two. Just some pool play games. Get them in. See where you're at seating wise. Scorpions beat Dream eighteen to twelve. Wasn't there for that one. Same for Rampage and Dream, which was twenty to six. Let's get this going now. Next one up. So the standings for the end of the day one. Misfits first overall, 2-0 and over plus 15. Uh, second with Scorpions, 2-0 over plus 7. 
Rampage, one and one plus seven. Playmakers Elite, one and one plus six. Elite Rebels, one and one plus two. Ride Out, 0 and two minus 18. And Dream, 0 and two minus 20. So Misfits with the best record overall at the end of Saturday. Once again, second straight swim in a row, bad. They come into Sunday with the best record. Um, defense struggled in both games a little bit, putting up a combined 38, 19 and a half points per game. Um, offense, putting up the points when need be, uh, made a huge rally in the second half of the game with the Elite Rebels. First half exploded against Rideout. Uh, a little bit of stagnation in the second. Consistency seems to be the issue with them there. Uh, defense a little shaky. Not quite a 100% strong performance, but a very deep A bracket performance. You take a look at these teams on here. Scorpions plus seven as well. They had some close matchups. They were Dream and uh, PME. Rampage plus seven as well. Elite Rebels one and one as well as PME for plus six and might plus two. Uh, Ride out minus 18, and then Dream will finish at the bottom. Uh, 0 and 2 minus 20 on the Saturday. On the Saturday. Sunday results right out the gate. PME beat the Rebels 28 to 12. Um, Rebels were in this game mostly from a pick six that happened uh, in the second quarter. It was 105 yard interception return for a touchdown. You're dropping a night, Jaeger. Yeesh. Um, that play kept the Rebels in the game. After that, they had nothing. It was all PME. Not as close as the final score might imply, though the Rebels did have a chance late. It was only 15 to 12. Boy, you got to stop scratching. You got to chill, dog. What are you doing? It's an aggressive me all night. <laughs> so I keep flinching back here. He keeps scratching me. He's got to chill. He's got to chill, Jaeger. Um, Rampage 21, ride out 20, double overtime. This was arguably the best game of the day. Back and forth battle between these two. Um, always a good one when these two have battled it out this year. They've had some classics for the ages in 2021, and this was no exception. Uh, Rampage had a chance to win a field goal at the end, but they missed. Right out missed a few extra points. Both kicking games coming unclutched for each side. However, the offenses back and forth between each other. This was a great game overall. Rampage gets the dub and advances to the semis. Scorpius beat Dream 14 to 6. I didn't get much of a chance to look into that game much. I was over on the Rampage right outfield. Um, PME 12, Misfits 6 in overtime. This was an interesting defensive duel between each side. Uh, each defense showed up in a big way. PME got the win late after a Chris Boone pick 6 to end it in overtime. Uh, Rampage over the Scorpions 14 to 6. Um, didn't get a chance to see that one. As well, I was over covering PME Misfits. And, of course, the championship, PME 21, Rampage 8. This game was not close at all at any point in time. PME, I think, within the first six plays of offense, had three touchdowns. They never looked back. PME, Playmakers Elite, your 2021 Capital Classic A champions. Take a look at the final standings. They go 4-1 and one of a plus 37, largest margin of the weekend. Second place is Rampage, three and two of a plus three. Third place to Misfits, two and one of a plus nine. Scorpions, two and one of a minus one. Elite Rebels, one and two of a minus 14. Ride Out, 0 oh and three of a minus 19. Dream, 0 oh and three of a minus 28 overall. So those are your Capital Classic Final A standings. Let's go back. TBT, top 25, nine man power rankings. These teams are the ones who have not made a minimum qualifications. Um, OTF and Wild Savages, the only ones who are still playing for the remainder of the year, they're both going to be at Nationals. Uh, OTF and A, Wild Savages playing B. Wild Savages, of course, a combination of Wild Card and Savages over in uh, the Rhode Island Flag Football League. OTF, we saw them in Charm City Classic. Uh, they played A, did pretty well for A, actually. Let's see what they do come nationals. Uh, they're a team to look out for. Missing the cut. These are the teams that are just outside the rankings, of course. No one really changing around here. Gusto Land is going to sit at 44 still. They didn't really improve much on their last tournament. 
Uh, the only change in the rankings, really, when you take a look at it, there was a bit of a switch. Maryland met them past Southside by the end of it. Um, only us fell out of the rankings. Remember, Maryland Titans were ranked or unranked coming into this tournament. They were 27th. I, I'm only dropping only us because they didn't participate. No slight against them. We know they'll bounce back, but right now, I got them as the first team out in the top 25 now. Dragon second team out. They'll be at Nationals. Demons, third team out. They'll also be at Nationals. x Dog season is done. They're the fourth team out, however. And Dream is the fifth team out. The rest of the teams, however, Blackhawks, Venom, Browns, all will be at Nationals. That's with no excuses in the 401 pressure. Um, so now let's get to the top 25 overall. Start to take a look at it. At 25, we got FOE, 17 to 13 overall. On the year, they went out there this weekend going one and two, getting a win on the Titans. But losing to the Titans and Bad Boys, we're going to drop them down to 25th for now. Bad Boys 24th, 1918 to two overall. 10 9 and 1 in circuit play. Um, had a hot start to the weekend, 2 and 0, oh, but ultimately one and done on Sunday to the Maryland Titans. But they've been proving a lot. Let's see how the Bad Boys look come the end of the season. 23rd, I got the Long Island Reapers still, 10 and 7 and 2 out of the GCFFA. Not much to say on them yet. I'm kind of waiting to see uh, GCFFA playoffs next week. They'll be going and performing up there. 148 Outlaws, I got a 22nd at 8 and 8, uh, 1 and 2 on the year uh, for the 148 Outlaws. You got to stop scratching me every time I sit there. I'm going to start. I don't know. You're making me mad, boy. Yeah, chill. <laughs> Oh, Jaeger, you love me, but you hate me. 22nd, 148 Outlaws, 8-8 eight and eight out of the Rhode Island Flag Football League. They were one and done in the playoffs, fell in a brick squad nation. They've had a pretty good up and down year. We'll see how they end up the rest of the way. Uh, 21st, Chain Gang Blazers, 16-11. and 11. As mentioned, I combined Chain Gang stats with the Blazers record on the circuit uh, and the results they had from – Atlantic City and uh, from Rhode Island or from Albany rather as well. So that's what we got right now for the Chang Gang Blazers. GCFFA Spring B champion. They'll be merged from the circuit with the Blazers. We'll see them at Nationals. 20 through 16, number 20, I got Takeover, 10 and 9 out of the GCFFA. 19, I got Ride Out, 17, 17 to 1 out of Maffle. Ride Out dropped a little bit because of 0 and 3 over the weekend over at uh, Capital Classic. They're down to 500 now for the year. We'll see how they end up come B Nationals. 18, I got Riot Squad, uh, Lilius Legacy B Champions. We won't see them till Nationals either. 17, I got Brick Squad Nation. They were the runner-up in Rhode Island's Flag Football League. 15, 6, and 1 for Brick Squad. We'll see where they're at uh, come Nationals as well. I got number 16, the Long Island Ducks at 14, 8, and 1. Uh, pretty decent performance coming off of Rhode Island, Flag Bowl. Still one more time to go, come national. We'll see how they do. Number 15, I got Baez Auto. Good performance for over the weekend. Championship, the only thing missing. Going to drop to put them at the 15 for now, though, at 12 and 7, up about two spots overall. Maryland Titans with the biggest jump from 27 to 14 for the Capital Classic B Championship. They're now 23, 12 and 1 overall. That's a big statement for this team. They're back in the top 15, ranked now once again. We are starting to question where they're at, where we're going. But right now, I think they're in a good place. Number 13, we got Empire, 37 and 8 out of the XFFL. ACB champions, XFFL New Jersey Spring Champs, XFL League Spring Champs. Now they are XFFL New Jersey Fall Champions. They're going to play the Warhawks, who I have as a number one rec team coming into Sunday. So we're going to have a matchup, the number 13 team in the TBT power rankings versus the number one team in the TBT league rankings. So that's going to be an awesome matchup. Empire Warhawks rematch of the XFFL spring championship this Sunday. They're going to face off the battle for the XFFL Super Bowl PA versus New Jersey. Uh, we'll see how Empire can come out. Can they add more hardware? They got four championships this year, going for a fifth one. They have the second most wins in the country. A hot team right now. One of the top teams to look forward to. Number 12, we got Nomads, 10 and 4. 
They were the Rhode Island Flag Bowl B champion. That's the biggest thing that's got them right now. A lot of momentum coming off that tournament. Let's see how they look going to Nationals. Just at the Titans, this is what they needed to get over the hump going into it. We'll see how they keep going. Number 11, falling out of the top 10, Elite Rebels, 18, 19, and 1. They got a losing record right now. But as I mentioned, it's a very tough schedule along the way. Um, they've been playing a lot of hard competition all year. Um, they've won a championship, Clash of Th York three champions. They definitely have that potential to come out there and get themselves another one. We'll see how they do come nationals. Number 10, Rampage, 43 and 14 and two. Um, once again, back to a championship game, this time an A championship, the third straight year in a row Rampage had made a DMV November tournament A championship. And, but this time, however, they just fall short. Two playmakers elite. Um, just not there this time for Rampage. Some could say, like, it was tough, tougher competition, but it's been, it still says a lot that Rampage, for three straight years now in a row, on terms of uh, tournaments at this time of the year, has gotten to the championship game. And they could have had the three-peat. Unfortunately, not there for Rampage. They fall one spot as a result in number 10. As we're kind of starting to sort out some of the B teams here from the A. Misfits sitting there, number nine right now. Um, very good Saturday. Disappointing Sunday. Some things might have been a little questionable at times, but I feel like this Misfit squad went out there, they played their best offensive game, offensively not clicking, but all the weapons and talent they got, if they maintain those pieces, they're going to be fine come Nationals. You're going to see a monster of a team come Nationals if they can keep it up. Uh, they just have not gotten over that home. They get one more chance to do that. Come next weekend with the GCFFA playoffs, we'll see if they can move up right before Nationals gets there. The only team right now in the top 10 without hardware, only team in the top 14 as well. So we'll see if they can add some to it. Number eight, I got the NTB Wolfpack, 11-0. and 0. Um, As mentioned, they are the defending B national champions, St. Louis nine-man champions. They'll be playing A nationals. They got a 16-game winning streak going back to last nationals when they lost to the Blackhawks. Um, overall for the year, they are actually uh, 17 and one, I do believe. Um, so we'll see how the NCB Wolfpack can do. Can they come out and get the national championship? For the A bracket, can they pull a second gen? Number seven, I got the Scorpions, 32, 24, and two. They won both leagues and the Beltway this year. Math won the spring, other fell in the fall. Only thing alluded to them, a circuit championship. This time around, semifinalist lost to Rampage in another tough battle between those two. Um, Rampage wins what will probably be the final matchup of the year between those squads. Sports play at A at Nationals, Rampage B. It hurts for the Scorpions. It was a big chance for them. They still got an opportunity, though, to win some kind of league trophy. Can they win another trophy along I-95? When they go up to GCFFA next week, we'll see. They could become the first team to win three leagues in one year. Well, let's find out how they do it. Number six, I got Playmakers Elite, 19 and seven right now, four and one in league ball. Maffle Fall Champions, Capital Classic A Champions. They're moving up in the world. I was I dropped them a little bit after the whole B declaration, but they're definitely back there in the top 10. This is a team that's more than worthy of playing in A. But they want to play B, see how it goes at Nationals. Go out there and win that championship. Because if you don't, considering what we saw this weekend, it'll be a disappointment. But I like what PME has in store. They're doing a lot of good work right now. Number five, main event, eight and two. Not much to say. Top five is pretty much the same. Only update is Rhode Island Lions have since won the RIFF. So two championships in a month for the Lions, both their tournament and league ball. Um, we will see how it goes the rest of the way for these squads. Only about one, I believe we got about two actual championships still to crown. The XFFL Super Bowl next week or this weekend coming up between Empire and the Warhawks. And, of course, the GCFFA playoffs as well. 
which will have the Red Otter, which will have not Red Otter, but Red Otter Punishers, the Bulldogs in it, as well as um, Misfits will also be in it. Scorpions will be in it. Um, Empire as well. Just making sure I get the names all in there. Takeover will be there. Long Island Ducks will be there. The Panthers, the Demons. Chang Gang will be there. Reapers will be there. That's going to be an awesome time. All right, let's go over now. Dragons included. Let's get to the regional rankings. Here's some changes. The top five, the top seven or eight is about the same there, but a bit of a shuffle. Takeover falls out of the regionals. And in comes Brick Squad Nation at number nine now in the north. Uh, that's the second Rhode Island team added to it. Riot Squad. They drop a little bit as well with Brick Squad's performance at uh, playoffs surpassing Riot Squad. Uh, they're now 10th overall, and I got them up north. In the south, PME is your new number one down here. I got them at number one, at that position. Scorpion second, NTB Wolfpack third, um, Misfits fourth, Rampage fifth, Elite Rebel sixth, Maryland Titans seventh. Now they jump back into these rankings. They shot up in a big way. Uh, Baez falls down to eighth in it. Right out, slipping down to ninth. And at 10th place overall in the South, I got the bad boys. Um, let's take a look now. League's represented. GCFFA still has the most at six. OMFFL, they get a new rep uh, in there. They got five now. Six if you count the Misfits. GCFFA would technically have eight if you count the Misfits and Scorpions, but I consider them to be Misfits and KFFL team. First and foremost, and then they uh, with OMF with uh, Scorpions or always Mills team. Independent, you got four independent teams represented. Main event, High Rollers, Riot Squad represented as, as well, and Nomads uh, from different states. Main event and Rollers from New York, Nomads from New Jersey, Riot Squad from Connecticut. Maffle, they actually fall down to three reps with only us falling out and Maryland Titans jumping in. Uh, those reps are P and me, Ride Out, and FOE. Uh, RIFF or Out of Flag Football, they got three as well with the Lions, Brick Squad at 148. KFFL just won with the Misfits. St. Louis 9 just won with NTB Wolfpack. YAFFL just won with Baez Auto. And XFFL just won right now with uh, Empire. Take a look now. Most overall wins. Rampage has the most of 43 with three with three more added over the weekend. Empire second most right now with 37. Misfits or Empire gained two more over the weekend, winning the XFL championship. Misfits gained two more over the weekend on Saturday. They're sitting at 36 of the third most wins. Scorpions have 32 when they added two more on Saturday. Uh, there and one more on Sunday. So actually, they're going to be at 33 wins. I'll do a recount on that in a minute. Uh, Punishers, 28 is what they got right now. Lions just below them at 27 with the six most wins. Titans, they get four more. They jump into the top 10 here at seventh with the seventh, with the seventh most wins at 23. Strong Island Bulldogs, they got 22 right now. They haven't put in a lot of work in the last few months, but – they are still performing very well. Uh, Tri-State Spartans is the only non-ranked team on this list. They're actually in the 40s now in the overall rankings. They got 21 wins along the way in the KFFL. Worth noting, 16 of those came prior to AC weekend, and it has just not been the same since that I've seen five wins since June. They're in a whole other path, but – for the moment, the stat they can hold on to is having the ninth most wins in the country right now amongst nine-man teams. But catching up to them, number 10 is Playmakers Elite with 19. Right out just below them, tied for that 10th position as well. But I get PME the nudge with the head-to-head -head victory and the most overall wins. Um, so there you go. That's this week's episode. Um, special thank you to Locke Edwards, Troy Carroll, and Greg Parker for coming on tonight. Congratulations to the Maryland Titans and Playmakers Elite on the B and A championships, respectively. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night for another episode. Uh, so we'll be doing the Turkey Bowl draft. And then next week, we'll be back to talk about GCFFA playoffs, 
the final nine man event before we get to nationals. And we'll go out, we'll talk about what's been going on up there, interview a couple of the players along the way and teams. Um, we will we won't have any rankings put up for next week. We're just going to be doing an interview show if we can get one and then just going from there. And then after that, we'll be doing our nationals coverage um, all the way until after the tournament. And then that'll be it for 2021. And we will wrap up ready for 2022. So last DMV tournament of the year, last local event of the year, really kind of sad when you think about it. It's been a good year down here in the DMV South area of nine man. Have some fun. More coming in April, I hope. Till then, though, we'll see you guys tomorrow night, Turkey Bowl draft, and then Thursday night, we'll sh- we might be doing a recap show. We'll see. Till then, I'm Joey Blaze. Good night, everybody. <laughs>